Well, the air conditioning system's fully installed now. I got a little drain tube off the manifold there to keep water from dripping onto the uh, uh, they're waterproof, but the connectors for the Holly ECU. So um, yeah, she's she's installed, and I've got uh, all the hoses in, and I'm currently running a vacuum purge slash uh, leak test, and so far it's. Uh, holding tight so there's my little vacuum uh, generator and um, I'm uh, going to let it run because what you want to do is have any any moisture that may be in the system will evaporate it'll it'll uh, boil off in the vacuum and then you'll be able to um, get just one way of drying the system out is by leaving the pump running it just uh, any water will, will, will you know, come out of the, uh, the, the fluid typically and um, although what happens is um, oils with the refrigerant uh, type oils, P POE oils and uh, um, the other type of oils um, can absorb the moisture and then create acids that eat the system so moisture is never a good idea. So get it out now, and then I can uh, charge the system and try it. See if it uh, see if it works with all the uh, the new plumbing, all the new O-ring fittings, and uh, and everything. So yeah, I'm kind of excited. It's a full day of grinding out this thing, making it uh, making it come to life. So hopefully it's gonna work. Well, I'm charging, and uh, it's held vacuum nicely and purged out. And um, I've got frost on the uh, uh, expansion valve, so this thing's running on low right now as it's uh, charging. And I've got um, just over 400 something grams of um, 134A refrigerant in the system right now. So. Um, you can actually see the refrigerant in the uh, last bubble. So, anyway, we're, um, it's happening. We're making it happen. I will uh, run detailed testing tomorrow and uh, make sure the system is uh, fully, fully functional. But uh, this is a good ending to the day today, for sure. Yeah, the system is running nicely. So um, you can see tons of frost on the uh, thermal expansion valve, and um, kind of block some of the airflow actually on the evaporator because it's all frosted up on the far side, and um, because it's it's wanting to draw air in more on the uh, closer to the blower so um, now there's no question this thing's pumping out uh, lots of thermal BTUs of cooling because uh, everything is frosty so the line from the TXV all the way across the beginning of the uh, evaporator everything in this whole area gets nice and cold in fact I'm gonna have to probably insulate the inside of this so that the engine heat doesn't go through that metal surface there um, Obviously, this on any Mark One or Mark Two, uh, any, any heat transfer across is going to warm up the air coming into the engine. Anyway, I'm getting a, a five degree C um, differential um, from input to output, um, and uh, on a medium blower setting right now, um, I think it's better than that. But I just that's just the way I'm currently measuring it. it it's cold today, so it's barely 21 degrees C here, um, 70 you know, degrees Fahrenheit, and um, but yeah, I know the whole system is functioning correctly. Probably have a bit too much um, oil uh, in the system, it's hard to judge, but um, slowly going to sort of bleed some of the oil out of it, and um, I do that just by sort of flushing coolant through it, and I probably also have probably a little bit too much coolant. Uh, refrigerant, I should say, in the system, um, but uh, it's hard to, to judge. I'm, I'm dealing with about 
Um, on the low side, just around 20 uh, psi when it's um, on high. Yeah, 18, 17, 18. And uh, it's wobbling around a little bit, which indicates to me that I've got either too much coolant in the system or maybe there's oil, too much oil. But I, I, um, I'm getting 60 psi when I turn the, uh, the system off and it's cold. So um, it's held pressure all night, which is awesome. And um, yeah, I'm super happy with the way it's working. But I've killed my battery. i got to turn this thing off now. So I flushed out some of the about 100 mils of uh, the coolant of the uh, oil. So there it is down there. And um, I didn't fully recharge it, so I've left the um, I've got the system pressure down 15, and it's nice and steady now, which is making me happier. And I've got the uh, pump running on its lowest setting, and look how. That expansion valve is completely frosted over, and um, you know, look at the in in inlet line, which is an insulated line running into the evaporator. So it's uh, it's uh, it's working better now, and uh, you know, we're getting on on the low setting, we're getting over over um, a five degree C drop in uh, the temperature. Um, so. My battery's not fully recharged yet, so I, gotta, I can't leave this running for too long. But uh, yeah, this is what I was hoping for. So, yep, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. Well, it's finally warmed up a bit. And um, so the air temperature is uh, 21, 22 degrees Celsius. And um, the, this has been running for about 20 minutes late in the afternoon. so. The pressure goes up as the system pressure goes up as everything heats up, obviously. And um, you know the system is running incredibly well. The uh, thermal expansion valve is obviously like super cold, and um, and obviously you can see there's frost on the evaporator unit. And um, yeah, the whole thing is like icy cold. So. The air that gets drawn in here is like the, everything in here is cold. So not only is the air going to be chilled from passing through the evaporator, but it's going to be chilled just by being in this area here. Because so all the components, all the metal in here is getting to be frosty. So it's pretty awesome. Um, I'll just have to, uh, as I said, insulate this from the heat that comes through. This is no different than any other Mark I or Mark II. Um, the rain tray warms up, it's gonna heat the air that gets sucked into the uh, the system. So just keep that in mind. And um, I, I, the only problem I've got, and, and I'll, I'll zoom into the, um, uh, so current, it's drawing a net, net of 20 something amps, 21 amps, 20, amps but I am running a, um, a charger that's providing 10 amps so some of that currents going into the battery some of that current is supplementing the the system so it uh, probably a total of close to 30 amps of current draw and um, so the air that's being drawn into the car there you go it's 14 and a half uh, degrees Celsius versus 22 degrees uh, externally and dropping so it's um, you know we're, we're, we're getting uh, 8 degrees temperature differential um, across the system right now and um, probably get better than that it's continuing to drop as the system stabilizes so I think we'll probably when this whole system sealed up see a 10 degree C drop which is what we anticipated with the prototyping and uh, yeah, so, you know, I can play a little bit with the system pressures and how much uh, um, refrigerant gets put into the system, but, uh, and less is more, it's funny, you know, if you put too much in and the system can't, just fights it, but um, what happens is it just won't evaporate in the evaporator because there's too much back pressure, 
so you you want to bring that system pressure down. I probably still have it a little bit too high. I just need to, to tweak and uh, we'll go from there.